thought I'd make another quick video. I guess we'll call this one the But My Helix Don't Got That episode. Um, it's not really an episode of anything other than my warped mind. <laughs> um, Lone Star came out this week on the Helix 2.5 firmware. Very cool amp. Uh, myself and a lot of other people um, like it and are into Andy Timmons and it's his amp and what have you. I've been playing with an Andy Timmons style patch for a while. I watched uh, Daniel Steinhardt from that pedal show from Gig Rig. Um, did an episode where he built Andy Pim Timmons' new pedal board. And um, I watched that and the episode before that where Andy Timmons talked about everything he was wanted in the board. And there's a couple episodes. That are very, very cool. You should check it out. That pedal show. If you haven't watched that pedal show on YouTube, check it out. Unbelievable stuff. At any rate, so I made a patch in Helix, um, which make, Helix makes it incredibly easy to do. Um, and I have, a, I have a Boss Blues Driver, which is how Andy cops his clean tone. And uh, so I put the Blue Driver in loop, and I have a Mesa Boogie Studio preamp, which I kind of dialed the clean channel up to as close to a Lone Star as I can get it. And it's my usual patch, it's what I play with most of the time. Occasionally I just switch in and out the amps. I'll use Helix models or my, my preamps, depending on my mood. Um, and I've been doing that for a while. So a lot of people are talking about um, what are you using, because there's no Blues Driver in the Helix, you know, and how do we get there? How do we get there? Uh, Kinky Comp, you know, Minotaur, Tube Screamer, which are great tones. I love my Minotaur into my studio preamp, just that volume rolled back a little bit. It is a fantastic clean tone. It's a fantastic dirty tone, too. But those pedals are different than Blues Driver. Um, and what I'm going to play for you right now is um, a patch, just a quick little video. It's about 20 seconds long, and there's two clips. There's two clean guitar clips, and one of them is the actual Boss Blues Driver in the loop going into, I actually used the, the, the new Helix model, the Cali Texas. And the other one is my Helix mock-up of a Blues Driver, um, and they came out pretty close. Um, and I'll let you listen to them, and then I'm going to show you how I did it and why it worked as well as it did and we can go from there. Okay, so they're close. They're really close. There's a few differences you hear. Um, the blues driver patch does sound a little bit more edgy um, in the higher frequencies, to my ear anyway, through my monitors. But they're close, and if you needed to gig with this, I mean, this is like, you know, <laughs> fine. <laughs> uh, plus, you won't have to carry an extra pedal, which is a plus. Or you don't have to buy one, which is a better plus. But here's the thing. When we're looking at pedals and what they do, um, we have to look at three big things if we want to try and cop a tone. The first one is the EQ curve. So we have to look at the EQ curve of the pedal. Everyone knows like a Klon and a Tube Screamer, like a mid-hump pedal and um, like an OCD or I think a King of Tone. There's other pedals out there that are like Marshall, Marshall in a box, you know, and they got to have an EQ curve that kind of has a little bit of a mid scoop to it, typically more bass, and then kind of rolls off the treble. But there's usually a little scoop, a little saddle in the middle. Um, some pedals just come up and go straight across. Um, there's all different EQ curves. You can take a pedal and force it into a different EQ curve. It may or may not work. You could probably do a reasonable job with that. Um, you, next, the second thing you have to look at, very important, is the characteristic of the clipping, waveform shape. And the third thing you have to look at is where the pedal breaks up, in what frequency bands, and what the waveform shape is in those frequency bands. Because every pedal is different. The way pedals work, the way amps work, is there's a gain stage, there's a little EQ, usually a high, low pass, or a mid pass, a band pass filter. 
and then it goes to the next stage. And what those filters do in between each gain stage is they basically pick what frequencies are going to be clipped in that gain stage. So coming in, you usually go through the first gain stage and it's pretty clean, and then they'll pass certain frequencies off. They'll shunt some to the ground, and they'll pass a bunch of to the next stage. And that's those are the big waveforms, and those are the ones that get clipped to the next gain stage. And then they might pass some different frequencies to the next gain stage, depending on the on the pedal and or the or the amp or the preamp or and how many gain stages it has. And that's how they get voiced. That's the voicing, right? And then there'll be an EQ stack somewhere. Sometimes it's between gain stages. Sometimes it's after the gain stages. It just depends. So this all affects the voice of the pedal. So what we need to look at first, again, like I said, is EQ curve, waveform shape, and then go through the frequency bands and see how closely we can get those waveform shapes in those different frequency bands. The differences that you heard between those two pedals were most likely differences in waveform shape. Subtle as they are, you can hear them, but it's close. So let's take a look. Okay, so what we have here is a patch I have set up in Helix, uh, and I use it to take a look at different things, either be that Helix components or components I stick in a loop or what have you. Um, Basically, what I have is another computer, it's a PC, sitting to the left over here, that has a software on it called RTA, which is real-time analysis software. Uh, it has a spectrum analyzer and oscilloscope and some waveform generators and some other stuff. Um, and what we do, what I do is I use it to take a look inside uh, of different pieces of gear, because I like to know how they work. So what I got set up right now, we come in from that other computer, on return to and we go out return send one and whatever I put on this line gets looked at does a frequency sweep so we're going to turn everything off this is off and I got a couple different things sitting in here but we'll go over that in a second and if I do a frequency sweep do hit, hit the button here's just quick sweep and we end up with a solid blue line right here at minus 10 dB my test tone is set at minus 10 dB and that's a straight line. My equipment's calibrated properly, and we end up with a straight line across. So I'm putting out a 10 dB signal all the way through the audio spectrum. And what this does is it goes into a piece of gear, and then the resulting output signal that the computer hears, it records, and we get a graph of whatever I'm peeking at. So let's take a peek at a Boss BD2 Wazacraft pedal, set pretty much the way Andy Timmons sets his. I think my level is a little bit lower. And then he had his set um, from what I've seen of his settings. But the level actually doesn't change the EQ waveform shape until you run it really high and it clips the output buffer of the pedal. So as long as you don't do that, as long as you keep it below like 4 o'clock, it doesn't have a problem. Um, all it does is shift the graph up and down. So let's take a look and see what we come up with. I mean, I set mine just to get a decent unity with what I was trying to do. Because if you turn it up too high, it'll drive the front of the amp too hard. Okay, so this is a graph of a BD2 blues driver. What we can see is we have a pronounced spike at 140 hertz. Comes up, it's from 50 hertz roughly, 40 hertz probably, I guess, below. It's cutting. And above 40 hertz, it's boosting. We have a 20 dB boost at, at 140 hertz, and then from there, it gradual, gradually cuts all the way down, all the way out to 20k, and it's still at 20k, it's still 4 dB boost. So that is the BD2 boost driver, and we're going to save this in memory slot number one. Okay, so from now on, it will appear. Green. So we have the turquoise line, which is a test tone, a baseline, and we'll have this green graph up here. Now let's take a quick glance through. Is this long? No. So, okay, so what we'll do is let's take a quick look at a couple of Helix's pedals. And the first one we'll do a quick sweep is the Kinky Cop. And I'm just going to look at factory settings, quick glances. 
Oh, I left the boost driver on. We gotta turn the boost driver off. There we go. That wasn't helpful. Let's take a look now. Okay, that's a kinky comp. Basically, 11 dB boost, a little bit of, you know, 11 dB boost, maybe 6 dB at 10 hertz, which doesn't exist in guitar world. And then above 1K, it slowly cuts. And let's look at a Minotaur. Let's see what that looks like. But again, it doesn't look like the Blues Driver, so it's probably also not breaking up. Let's take a look at the Minotaur. All right, again, another smooth line. These jagged lines usually mean that the pedal's breaking up. It's running out of headroom, it's clipping, it's distorting. The way the RTA software reads that is it gives me a choppy line, and I can usually tell where a pedal's breaking up. They're usually breaking up, when you get this, is this is breaking up a lot. But anyway, Minotaur basically starts at Unity. I got a bump at 1K, and it rolls off pretty, pretty aggressively. But, you know, 1K at 140 hertz, far apart. So again, a pedal, we can force it into an EQ curve, but it's not breaking up with a similar, similar characteristic, so it's not really what we're looking for. So let's keep looking. Look at a Timmy, the Tima. Come on, there we go. Okay, now again, this is more similar to the Kinky Boost. Um, it's breaking up pretty steadily, maybe a little less in here, and then it gets aggressive in here. I, I, I kind of like the breakup characteristics. If you look at where the line's wavy versus where this one's wavy, wavy, they're fairly similar. This pedal might, I didn't use this one, but this pedal might actually work for this application as well. But I didn't use this one because, and I'll, you'll see why in a minute. Let's take a look at, this is the OCD, the compulsive drive. All right, here, this is, you know, amp in a box, right? We have bass hump, a little bit of a saddle coming down through the middle, and then it rolls off above, up here. Amps usually have a saddle-shaped EQ curve. You put this on top of any kind of pretty much speaker, and you get the marshall kind of tone. That's the idea of these things. But this is only breaking up from 1K on up. And this pedal, as we see the blues drivers, behaving significantly differently. Let's take a look at the valve driver. Now that's interesting. Now we're almost there. And we haven't even done anything. So as long as this has similar waveform characteristics, we've got a winner. Okay, so. I have here a sine wave being generated at 100 hertz. Um, and see, it's pretty smooth. This has, it goes out of sync every now and then. That's why it gets a little weird. But this is sine wave, no pedals on, not going through anything. It's just going through the helix and back into the computer with all the patch, all the patches shut off. So the first thing let's do is turn on the blues driver and see what the waveform shape looks like at 100 hertz. And it's loud, of course. All right, let's go. Okay, so it's not a smooth sine wave anymore. It's a little curved in the front. It's a little curved in the back. It's definitely pointier. It's got a hook here. It's got a hook here. It's got a hump there. Not bad. Close to a sine wave. Not sounding really, really distorted. But not a perfect sine wave. So the pedal's definitely starting to distort at 100 hertz. Let's take a look at our... Helix valve driver. Okay, the valve driver is now on, and again we can see we have a hump here. It's pointier. It's a little jagged in the corner there. Similar concept though. It's not really bad. It's not really breaking up a lot. It's not a perfect sine wave. It's definitely going to sound more edgy. But at this frequency range, the two are pretty similar. So now we'll go back to the blues driver and let's go to, uh, let's go up a bit, let's see, where are we at? We're at 400 hertz now. 
Okay, this is the blues driver at 400 hertz. Oh, why are you doing this to me? This software has decided it wants to not be my friend today. There we go. No, stupid. There we are. Okay. Sawtooth. Um, that's the waveform that we've got at 415.2 hertz, which is what that thing is set to right now. Let's take a look at this. Fairly sawtooth. It's a little more crooked, but it's a sawtooth wave. I would call it a sawtooth waveform for the most part. Not a jagged sawtooth, like a curve, like a shark fin sawtooth, right? So let's take a look at, still I'm going to leave the helix one on. Let's go up to like the kilohertz or something. There we go, 1048. Again, more, more of these sharp sawtooth, kind of curved sawtooth waveforms. And let's look at the blues driver in that range. Same thing. So we're close. We're really close. And if we go up further, we get the same thing after this. As we continue to go up, we'll go to scope to 2K. 18, 18, there we go, 20, yeah, it's 2,900. Uh, that's where I wanted to go. I don't know. Let's go back down a little bit. Uh, 1,800 hertz. Again, same, same kind of waveform, that kind of curved sawtooth kind of waveform. And here we go, same thing again. So we have similar wave through forms through the spectrum now we just the only differences we have is the height of the waves or the volume which is our eq curve so let's go back and take a quick look at what this looks like so let me turn off the oscilloscope and stop and let me go and we'll switch back to this now what i've done here is i've adjusted the gain and the drive the gain was the level what are they, what is it what do they label them here it's the gain and the level i brought the gain down from the factory setting to 3.4 and i brought the level up to 7.1 and what that did was it made that lines have wavy characteristics in similar spots so we've got them breaking up in similar bands in the frequency across the frequency spectrum and as we just saw the waveforms are very similar too so now basically what's left in order to make a look like b is pretty much eq it so what i did was i took an eq let me just go right here and i took an eq a parametric and i'll go through the settings in a second Let's do a quick sweep with this and see what we come up with. Bingo. Okay. So let me turn off this guy here. We'll save this in the location five. All right. So now our green line, which I'm going to turn off also. All right, our blue, there it is. There's our helix derived blues driver bd2 and there is the actual bd2 so they're very close so we know we've got similar waveform characteristics we've got similar eq curves and we have um similar frequency bands of breakup again there's small deviations and it's not perfect but it's pretty close um that's how i did this that's the in the from I, my experience the best way that i found to proceed when you're trying to make something sound like something else i'm going to take this patch and i'm going to put it up on custom tone um, i'll include the link down below one more thing i want to show you before i end this video this is my blog and I'll include the link to this also and in here I have this post um, which is all the helix distortion blocks and it has just basically waveform shapes of every single distortion block now these are the not the legacy blocks that they just added 
I'll, I'll get to that. <laughs> but this is all the stuff that was here two weeks ago. Um, so it's all the different distortion pedals in Helix, and it goes through them, and it's just a quick picture of the factory settings. But what that does is it gives you an idea of what you're looking at as far as um, each block. Uh, so if you're trying to do something in particular with an amp um, or with a pedal, you can you can achieve that more easily. Well, at least for me, this is the way my brain works, so this is why I do this. So the last thing I want to go through with you is the EQ settings I used. And basically what I did with this was I just forced that blues driver, the valve driver, uh, the helix valve driver curve to match the blues driver curve because we knew we had already set up the distortion to be clipping in the same manner in the same waveform and in the same frequency bands or as close as we were going to be able to get it and so now we just had to make the EQs match and what this ended up being was um, I moved the low frequency to 140 hertz which is where you saw that bump um, I took the Q. The Q is fairly wide on this actually because it had to bring up a good amount of that. Um, so the Q is at about in the middle, 4.9, and I bumped it 5.8 dB. Um, this is the parametric EQ from Helix that I used to do this. Uh, mid frequency, uh, 850 hertz. The Q was at point zero, uh, 0 0.0 uh, and the gain was at minus 1.1. And the high frequencies, I had to cut that back a little bit because when I bumped it with the wide Q on the low frequencies, I had to trim a little bit there. Excuse me. And the high frequencies um, were uh, 4.5 kilohertz. Uh, the high Q was at 0.7, so another fairly wide Q because I was trying to smooth that slope coming down. Um, and the gain is at minus, uh, minus 3 dB. Uh, low cuts off. Uh, the high cut's at 16.6 because .6 I had a little tail, so I trimmed that off using a high cut. Uh, and I had to bump the level up to, to plus 3 dB to get it at unity. Um, important thing to note, if you use this, these two um, models in conjunction with one another, uh, let me read off the, the Minotaur. The Minotaur is, uh, not the Minotaur, the valve driver is at uh, 3.4 on the gain, 5.5 on the base, 4.5 on the treble. Those two, the treble and bass, are factory settings. Uh, and the level is bumped up to 7.1. If you use these two in conjunction um, to create a blues driver in your Helix, um, and you need to set Unity or cut the level because you're putting into a real amp or whatever, you're, the way your amp's set, it, overdriving it too much or not driving it enough, um, the way to do that is use the level control on the parametric EQ. Um, always the last gain stage is the one that it's just your output level. Um, it doesn't really affect the voicing of the pedal. So if we if you change the gain stage on the distortion pedal, it likely would distort the EQ curve to a point where it wasn't similar anymore. Um, that's why the last gain stage is always on the pedal. That's just a set unity, and it doesn't change the shaping of the EQing of the pedal at all. Um, I will put this, a link to this. Um, this is going to this is going to be on the Friendly Gear Freaks website. It's going to be I'll, I'll put it up on Custom Tone, um, and it's going to be on um, on my blog. And um, if you haven't checked out the Helix Group on Facebook, you should definitely check it out. It's a great group. Friendly Gear Freaks, great place. I'm there all the time. And, um, and my blog or my YouTube channel. If you want more of this content, please like, subscribe. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down. Feedback is always welcome. And uh, that's it. Have a good day.